Thank you so much, Katlejo. Yes, today is World AIDS Day, and we're talking about it on the show to bring some information to you as well. But did you know that TB is the leading cause of illness and death among those living with HIV in Africa? In fact, the two are so closely connected that the relationship is often described as co-epidemic. In the last 15 years, the number of new TB cases has more than doubled in countries where the number of HIV infections are high. Now, we've got our doctors in studio to make sure that we are informed and that we can all go out for testing. But Dr. Jensen and Dr. Tracy are with us in our studio from Government's USAID's mass TB screening campaign to help us understand this link between HIV and TB. Doctors, welcome to the show. Thank you. We want to talk about this because we want to be informed. But the two diseases are a deadly combination, as they call it. They are far more destructive together. Can you tell us the link between TB and HIV, please? Yes, as you know, today is World AIDS Day, and um, the theme is uh, towards an HIV-free generation, um, uh, rise, act, and protect. So that, that theme really calls all of us to rise and awaken and protect ourselves and others against HIV and TB. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in South Africa, um, TB is very rife. In fact, most of us breathe the TB bug and, and we, nothing happens to us. Um, but if you have HIV and your immunity is low, then you are more at risk and you become more vulnerable and you actually get HIV because your immunity um, is decreased. Mm -hmm. um, HIV, actually, if you have HIV, you are you have a 30 to 100 fold risk of getting uh, TB. So TB is actually the number one killer of uh, uh, people with HIV. It's something that we've discussed on the show too, just be informed. And I mean, even what you're saying today is news to me. How has TB changed since the advent of, of HIV? So since the advent of HIV, what we have seen is that there's been an increase in the number of TB cases, not only in South Africa, but world over. People, with li people who are living with HIV are more at risk of developing TB. But it's also important for people to note that even HIV, for people who are living with HIV, TB can be treated and it can be cured. So what we would want to encourage the public is that if you have got symptoms of TB, which are losing, if you are losing weight, if you are coughing, if you are also having uh, excessive sweating at night, and you're also having fever, mm -hmm. and in children, if a child is not growing very well, you need to visit the nearest clinic and get the child tested or yourself tested for, for TB. And once you're tested for TB, if you're found to have TB, you're going to be put on treatment for mm -hmm. six months, and you need to take your medications for the, for the complete duration, even if you're feeling well. Okay. I, I'm glad you said that. Like, take the medication, even if you think you are better or cured already. Yeah. Now, <laughs> government has done their best. I've learned that the last five years you've been uh, taking great strides in this project and making sure that we all are informed. The strategies with TB and also the USAID campaign that we're talking about is evidence of this. The services that are available, tell me more about that. Uh, what are available for those who are affected, who's listening right now? So in terms of services, what is available in all our government hospitals, in our, all our government institutions, in regards to HIV, you will be able to, uh, to, to get HIV testing and uh, counselling from the facilities. For TB, you will also be screened for TB within the facilities and all these services are available for free. In addition to that, TB treatment and HIV treatment is available in all our government hospitals and is also available for free. South Africa has been able to, to, re to reach the universal access for ART coverage in the, in, the, in the world, meaning that all patients who are HIV positive will be able to go to the facilities and access the, the services. In addition, what is also happening in facilities, in, in order to support uh, patients from taking their medications, there are some adherence clubs that have formed within the facilities to educate the patients to ensure that they take their medications very well. Okay. Us, as the US said, TBK2 and other developmental partners, we're also partnering with the government to increase access to services by ensuring that we train the healthcare workers so that they will be able to manage the patients well. And in addition to that, we also support some community-based organizations and this will be, we'll give them funds so that they can actually ass, uh, assist in, in, um, in uh, reaching out to the communities Thank so you, that Doctor. the... We, are, we have to go. Yes, Thank you very much. It's, it's great having both of you here, Dr. Tracy, and also Dr. Jensen talking about World AIDS Day today and informing us about everything that we need to do. The, the, there's help out there. That's what we basically want to say, and that is our general message today on our Feel Good Breakfast show. It is time for the news.